Hi everyone! Today I'm going to share with you our lunch. What I'm going to prepare and it's going to be really made out of leftovers from yesterday. We have a little bit of potato and broccoli. The broccoli had some mozzarella on top. It's just a little bit left. And I boiled a cup of white quinoa with maybe something like three quarters of a cup of water at low temperature. And the reason for that is because I don't like quinoa um, too much overcooked. It really becomes um, this type of porridge, porridge texture and I, I like it to be fluffy like this and then we have half a can of sweet peas which i'm also going to add and on top i'm going to make a sauce something like bechamel sauce that we're gonna put and we're gonna bake everything together but anyways let's go for it and let's start to put together our meal so you get a better idea what I am going to do. Okay, this is how I arranged everything. I mixed the quinoa with the peas. And then I just arranged the broccoli and the potatoes around inside. I'm going to use the water from the peas. And... I have half a cube of uh, that's vegetable bouillon in the fridge, but you can use anything you want. I'm just trying to use whatever I have left because I really hate to um, throw away food. And. That will actually melt as well. So I'm just going to put just a little bit of butter or you can use a little bit of olive oil on top. And I will put it to bake even though it's already cooked. For about 15 minutes, not more than this. At about 200 degrees Celsius. 200, 220, something like this. Okay, so this is how it looks like when I put the butter, as you see, it's very little. And you can literally improvise with any type of spices. I'm not going to put anything more than what I already put, because the potatoes and the broccoli, they already had some spice. And I added also the, the bouillon, which is going to spice it up. I really like the combination of this vegetable bouillon, or it can be chicken or whatever. Uh, and quinoa it really starts to taste amazing but after I finish cooking this again it's just all the taste to combine I'm going to add some dill on top and then we are going to put the sauce on top so you can actually make this with any kind of leftover vegetables and can be done with rice or quinoa I just like the flavor of the baked quinoa it has a very distinct like nutty type of flavor and it tastes amazing it goes excellent also with eggplants with red peppers even with tomato if you like cooked tomato I don't really cook tomato because Andre doesn't uh, like cooked tomatoes so <laughs> if I cook tomatoes I just do something for myself um, and anything that has a little bit of sweetness goes excellent with the quinoa. Also, uh, beetroots, carrots, they are excellent addition. So, we're gonna take this and we're just gonna put it in the preheated oven. And it's not the actual time this, it's actually daytime. <laughs> we just don't bother fixing it. But I'm going to put it at 200 um, degrees Celsius for now. And let's move to the sauce. So this is going to be super simple. We have 300 
milliliters of milk approximately. I'm just gonna go for one egg. It's quite of a big egg, so I'm gonna add one, but you can put two or more as you wish. And I'm gonna add to this three spoons of flour. I'm gonna beat the egg and I'm gonna combine everything and then we're going to the stove to thicken this sauce. So this is my sauce. You can see the flour is still a little bit in, in lumps, but it's going to start dissolving. So the most important here is to put it on low and you just need to keep on stirring all the time, trying to break these lumps or you can do that beforehand. I just don't have the necessary tools, so I'm just going to do it this way and after a while it will start thickening and it will be pretty much ready it, it will be very fast literally as the other part of the meal is baking we will be ready with the sauce that will go on top of it so this is the ready sauce I made it a little bit thicker because that's how I like it but you don't have to make it that thick and I'm just literally going to add some salt, that's sea salt that I'm using, a little bit of pepper, and I'm also going to add just a little bit of butter on top. I'm gonna mix this and I'm ready to pour this on top of my food. This is how my meal looks like before I'm gonna add the sauce. I'm gonna sprinkle some dill on top just because I also have some extra and it is just about to go bad just before that. I mean if it stays like a couple more days and it will go bad. So it's a little bit hot. That's my meal, and in the sauce, I added just a little bit of cheese, maybe like 20 30 grams. It's just because I'm not that much of a person that likes milk like this, and the, ta the smell was not attracting me, so I <laughs> added just a little bit of cheese, of goat cheese, literally like 20 grams. And the taste, the smell, I didn't taste it yet, but the smell totally transformed. So I'm gonna put that and it goes back in the oven. This literally has the consistency of potato puree. And it's quite thick, as you can see. And it goes back in the oven until it gets golden on top. See you! I just topped this and it looks like this. It's just golden brown on top. It smells lovely. And I'm gonna show you how it looks inside after we cut it. So that's our meal guys, I serve it with a little bit of homemade yogurt, which is divine. It's actually the next day today because we ended up eating quite late so I couldn't film. And we already tried it and it's super tasty. So we're just gonna eat it, finish eating it I mean, today. <laughs> <laughs> Bon appetit and let me know if you like it, if you try this recipe in the comments down below. See you next time!